so the idea is that normally, or at least normative de sexual development, is that you so identify with your own sex that by the time puberty hits, what you most desire is what becomes eroticized. Mm -hmm. All right, so if we understand it this way, that sexual attraction is all about seeing the other as a good for you. Mm -hmm. When I'm secure enough in my masculinity and I see that I am a gift, God created us to be a gift, Yeah. then I'm going to want to give my gift to the one that is least like me. There we go. Yeah. The so other sex. Um, complimentary. I hate. Not, I'm not trying to say complementarianism. Just, but it's true complementarian. We yeah. have the wrong idea of complementarianism. Right. In most of our evangelical churches, mm -hmm. it's very chauvinistic. Right. Right. The stereotype that we see of complementarianism. True complementarianism is about seeing the the beauty in the other. Mm -hmm. And so when you see other as different, now you also need to see the other as different and good good in herself mm -hmm. when you have those components where, where you have an embodied sense of your own goodness and identification as a male for example and then you have an embodied sense of the other as good and as different from you then that's where you see the greatest difference and and where and greatest deficit of oh this is what i need this goes back to adam god recognized that it's not good for Adam to be alone. Mm -hmm. So there was a deficit. So one of the things I explained to my clients is, or really they just discovered on their own, and then I sort of say this and it helps confirm it for them, is the greater the deficit, the greater the desire. Oh, interesting. So, so, so are we saying, am I hearing, I think I'm hearing that same-sex attraction might come from a recognition or an, a subconscious recognition of a deficit of masculinity in a male. Correct. The sexual urge will always go where the greatest desire is. Wow. And where the greatest deficit is, that's where the greatest desire will be. Yeah. So the true image of God, if you actually understand, go into more of the Imago Dei, what it means to be made in the image of God. Image of God it's yeah. not arbitrary that scripture says, in the beginning he made the male and female, in the image of God he made them. That it, it places the our design as male and female mm -hmm. right there when mentioning the image of God. Yeah, right there, uh, Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Not arbitrary, because it's sharing that intrinsic to our being made in God's image is that we're male and female and called to become one flesh. Mm -hmm. This is something that Pope John Paul II would teach about in his Theology of the Body, so I'm a big mm -hmm. student of his and so it reflects God's own communal nature as a trinity. And so we're made to be relational in nature. So yeah. the image of God is actually male and female together. It's not just, yeah, individually I am made in God's image, but the full representation of that is in the male and female together. Well, some of the names of God are feminine. Like El Shaddai means... Uh... It means something like a multi-breasted nurturing mother is what yeah. El Shaddai means. There's some other really interesting tidbits too, like say um, the Hebrew word for, for mercy. Oh, what is it? Rakahamin, uh, uh, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. It means womb. The God, God's mercy is like a womb in which he holds us oh, and protects wow. us. You know? So it's like there's feminine characteristics. So women... Mm -hmm image God in his femininity mm -hmm. and men image God in his masculinity. If we understand masculinity and femininity as different ways of relating. So it's like we can't really portray the image of God without each other. Exactly. Yes. Wow. Pope John Paul that's, II that's would so say cool. that creation is male and female and marriage. Marriage is the ultimate symbol, the greatest sacrament, the greatest symbol of who God is mm -hmm. and actually the gospel as well that if the purpose of christ coming the incarnation was to reveal god's heart and to become united with us as he talks about in john 16 and 17 mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. may they be one as you and i are one and mm -hmm. if you've seen me you've seen the father he came to reveal the father's heart to us and so we get a sense that my greatest need is for union now marriage in this life though is still 
ultimately a sign of the greatest union that we're really meant for because mm -hmm. we're called to participate in the divine life as the bride of Christ so even for those who don't marry in this life you're still made for marriage all humans are called to marriage but not all of us participate in the earthly sign of that marriage we're all called to the heavenly marriage okay and that's our union with Christ that's a bride in which we get to participate in the life of the Trinity Integrated attraction is rooted in seeing the necessity of the other. Mm -hmm. So that means I need to have a good attachment with the other sex as well as enough of attachment with my own sex so that I, I don't experience a deficit within myself that I need to have mm. my masculinity affirmed. Mm. So if that is not adequately there by the time puberty comes, then my sexual urge is going to direct itself toward where I see the greatest deficit. So so it's very important for young men to have men in their lives to model masculinity for them and to instill that in them. Yeah, to accept I mean, them as they are as men and affirm that in them. So they, they have recognition, even if I'm different than a lot of other guys, I'm still secure enough that I am a man. I, have, I, am, I am a good. I'm meant to be a good gift. Yeah, yeah.